So this one I feel might have been a surprise to be this low down on the list. Let's find out why. Opening the episode, we have an astronaut stumbling onto something. Which really has no point in the end, but I'll get to that later on. Moving on, we see Batman confront a trio of scientists who seem to be a little more limber than they should be. Superman appears to help, but seems to receive visions and faints, Batman having to save him as the not-so-human scientists escape and destroy the satellite. Batman and Superman talk, Batman stating that this isn't the first place that's been hit, while Superman offers any help that he can be to Batman. Later, one of the two astronauts from the beginning, now a US senator, talks about disarming all the nukes that they have, and says that all they have to do is trust Superman. Some people, of course, protest that idea, including the Flash. Hey, the big guy's heart's in the right place, but give me a break. I'm the fastest man alive. And even I can't be in five places at once. Superman does begin disarming the missiles, which seems really familiar to me. If he ends up throwing them all into the sun, we might be in trouble. Batman finds the scientists, the real ones, inside some strange alien pods and is attacked. Being outmatched by the alien, Batman calls on Superman's help as a meteor crashes into Metropolis. An alien walker appears from the meteor and begins attacking as more appear, smashing into everything. Both Batman and Superman try to combat the menace, but it doesn't work. Superman appears to retreat, with Batman following him, as it becomes apparent these aliens are everywhere, even attracting the attention of the soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Diana of the Amazons. Batman catches up to Superman, knocking down a huge door, and finds a green-skinned humanoid behind it, John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. What is it? Mankind's only hope. Freeing John, who quickly changes into a form more recognisable by people, the trio is surrounded by the army. I'll vouch for him, you must let us go. I don't think so. But the world's security may be at stake. That's why he'll never leave here alive. Diana is seen collecting her armor and setting off whilst the trio of Superman, Batman and Jean try to flee. They don't make it far. Batman almost crashes, but the timely arrival of Green Lantern, Hawkgirl, Flash and Wonder Woman saves everyone. Jean gives the backstory to the aliens attacking Earth, which is pretty standard fare. They want to take over, drain resources and terraform the planet. Almost feels boring when you think about it. Hearing more about the aliens, the group splits up into three teams. However, this doesn't end well. Superman and Hawkgirl are captured, Flash and Green Lantern are forced to retreat, whilst Jean and Wonder Woman can only mourn as it appears Batman has died. No! Regrouping, the team goes to rescue Hawkgirl and Superman, only to discover it's a trap something I'm sure they'll begin to get used to during this series. As the team is held captive, the senator from before appears and is revealed to also have been an alien, and has been all along, using his power to disrupt Earth's defences. The alien's leader finally appears, and oh good god, what's it doing to Jean? That's just wrong, man! However, all is not lost as Batman appears and sabotages the alien's machines, removing the cloud cover that was keeping them safe from the sun. The team works together to stop the alien leader leaving, destroying its ship entirely, along with freeing all the captured humans. Whilst people are happy Despite over the threat the ending, victory, some warn that there'll be no defence if it happens vigil. again. You got lucky this time. What will we do if the invaders ever return? To which Batman constructs what I can only see as a billion dollar middle finger to that notion. The group discusses being a fully fledged team, which they all seem a little wary about, but all do say yes to. Except for Batman who says, I'm not really a people person, but when you need help, and you will, call me. Jean is the last to say if he's in, with Superman assuring him that despite being the last of his race, he's not alone. Ending the episode. This episode is a great beginning to the series, having a world-sized threat that no one hero could win against alone, forcing a team to be brought together, a tried and tested format for super teams. And the beginning mystery of it is built up well, Batman investigating and learning of the aliens, his pairing up with Superman, the meteors crashing to Earth, drawing the attention of other heroes like Wonder Woman, the discovery of Jean, it's great. But then there's problems that pop up. 
Like Jean bringing together people who he somehow just knew about, the alien senator somehow being able to go for two years without ever being affected by the sunlight, which melts him almost instantly at the end of the episode. Yeah, work that one out. The fact that we've never seen, nor have the characters mind you, either Hawkgirl or Green Lantern before, though a Green Lantern did appear during Superman series, but that was Kyle Reiner and not Jon Stewart. So I just feel like that could have been brought up, even briefly. While we get a metric ton of exposition for the alien antagonists, we learn nothing about Green Lantern and Hawkgirl, which seems like a missed opportunity, when the team is just starting out and we have three episodes to fill with content. Also, it's a good thing that those aliens who disguised themselves as the army let Batman, Superman and Jean know of their presence before shooting them. How honourable they must be to give their enemies a fighting chance at running away. This episode is good, but it's just a little lacking in establishing things. Just a little time towards Hawkgirl and Green Lantern would have done wonders, and really, there's no need to have the opening scene if they're trying to build a mystery, since it gives away, almost immediately, that the senator must have been a bad guy. And a minor nitpick to me is Jean's transformation seems way too quick into what would be his usual form for the series. That could have held off for a bit and have someone bring up that fact towards the end and show that he doesn't fit in. Heck, they could have had it at the end of the episode, signifying his enrolment into the League. It would have been a nice touch. But for now, the secret origin isn't so secret anymore, and ends up at number 17. Hey people, and thanks for watching this video. If you want to see the next one of these a full day before anybody else, you can do that by supporting me on my Patreon page. However, if you're watching this on my Patreon page, then thanks for your support.